um, parents, um, Barb and, um, oh, am I blanking on the name? Booth um, have been uh, parishioners for a long time. And uh, so when I came with Kathy Rocklitz, it's like, okay, this is kind of an interesting place. I, I want to keep coming back here. And so that's what happened. That's great. Mm-hmm. Also this morning, um, the Ringhoffers, Rich and Dorinda, um, are willing to share some of their story um, of how their lives have intersected with nativity. And um, I'm just gonna turn it over to you, Rich and Dorinda, and then just as we have our discussion time, um, feel free to, to address either Teresa or Rich or Dorinda. Take it away, Rich. Okay, well, I've learned over the years to let my wife talk first, then I can pick up the pieces afterward. So we'll let her go and tell what, from our perspective, what's going on or has happened. Okay, okay you're on. Well, I was raised in a very conservative Methodist mm -hmm. uh, household and uh, their family and church were the two big items and so I tried to bring that with me as I got married and had my own family. Uh, Rich was raised as a Roman Catholic. So when, after we did get married, we wanted to go to just one church. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. after exploring, we uh, decided on the Episcopal Church. And Rich was able to be received, but I had to be reconfirmed because my original confirmation was not done by a bishop. Um, we moved around a lot because of Rich's work. He worked with the military. And so uh, each place that we moved to, after finding a house was usually trying to find a church. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times there wasn't much of a choice, but uh, we always, if there was a choice, we tried all the Episcopal churches and then decided on the one that we liked the best. When we first came to Nativity, uh, our oldest daughter, Avalano, was just starting as a freshman at U of M. And our youngest daughter, Sarah, was in sixth grade. Because of Sarah, youth group and youth activities were important to us. But because of Rich's schedule, having worship services other than Sunday mornings was also very important to us. So we appreciated the fact that the Nativity had the Saturday evening service because that filled our need. He could get off work just in time to attend that service. Um, I also liked the morning prayers because several times on my way to work, I could stop and uh, attend morning prayer. I uh, became involved with the Altar Guild. Uh, we both were on the vestry and we both attended the Friday evening dinner and discussion groups uh, because we enjoyed uh, the people and the various topics that were discussed. I became co-leader of the youth group along with Jack Erickson and Steve Rates. And uh, so that took a lot of time. In conjunction with that, I worked on Safe Church in Y2A. And then I met monthly with the Episcopal youth leaders um, at the um, Episcopal Church St. Mark's. And then we also had a South of the River interdenominational youth group leaders meeting that met once a month, usually at Devani's for lunch. So this way uh, I was able to 
both get new ideas from the Episcopal Church as well as uh, let other churches know that we existed and we had a youth group. Because of the South of the River Church uh, group, we had a summer volleyball league and uh, the churches each uh, had a team and prayers were always said before the game started. We played at Lake Alabagnet on their sand volleyball courts. And it was usually for about six weeks in the summer. And uh, then uh, at least for our team afterwards, since we lived across the street practically, uh, we had the kids over for pizza. And even though it was not a really religious thing, just to hear their conversations and um, that I think they also learned a lot from one another, just having the group in sort of a non-church atmosphere. We also enjoyed the activities that Nativity had um, as far as some of the Shrove Tuesday pancake suppers and the art auctions and a lot of group activities. Uh, we still have two paintings that Grant and Meredith Robinson donated and one from Phyllis Rowley that we purchased and have been hanging on our wall um, with each home that we have lived in since then. And it's a nice remembrance of nativity each time we see them. Um, I don't think anyone could really work with the youth group or the Friday night group or family table and not be challenged in their faith and grow their faith also. We attended Nativity from 88 to night, early 99. Then we moved to Indiana and then to Illinois. And we came back to Nativity to visit several times, mostly due to our daughter and her family still living in Burnsville. But we also enjoyed seeing the uh, friends that we had made and meeting new people. Now we participate in some of the Wednesday night programs and some of the events. And um, we are definitely not as active as we were the first time, but we feel that our faith lives are being well fed. Uh, we have found throughout the years that Episcopalians in general are very independent thinkers and the church accepts and respects that. We greatly appreciate that in every church we have attended, we have been able to find a spot where we fit in and we try to give financially as well as of our time to support the church. If you can't seem to find activities that interest you, maybe it's time to speak with the staff and begin something new. This has happened with us in the past. Okay. Well, to, to continue on and to uh, do a few other things, the reason that we chose Nativity to start with, uh, I'll go back. Like Dorinda said, we were, I was Catholic and she was Methodist. And, but we knew in our own minds and hearts that we had to have one church, mm -hmm. one religion in order to raise our family and have a successful marriage. Uh, being split in religion just was not going to work for us. Uh, so that's why we, we started looking at the Episcopal Church, because that seemed like a, a very convenient uh, middle ground, as people would say. And uh, as a matter of fact, a little side note, when uh, Father Harris, uh, who was uh, the rector at St. Mary Magdalene in Villa Park, Illinois, where we were living, came over, um, he really inspired us to really become Episcopalian. Mm -hmm. He just, there was something about what he did and said, you know, made it, made it that way. 
So anyway, yeah, we moved to, uh, to Burnsville eventually, like Dorinda said. And um, an interesting part of uh, how we became or how we came to Nativity, other than the fact it was the only church really around the area. You know, there was one up in Egan. I think it was Egan. Isn't it Christ Church? Dana, mm -hmm. is that the right Mar one? Margaret, Mary and Margaret. Yeah, what, whatever it was. But anyway, the reason uh, I brought our two daughters, uh, Dorinda was still in uh, in South Bend closing up that house. And Lee Kabiski was uh, playing the guitar for the Sunday service. And we thought that was a good idea. And so we kept coming back and back now. You know, everybody will say, you know, music is part of the liturgy. Well, it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, but the basic thing was that uh, we liked the liturgy. Uh, we liked the people that were at Nativity and still in many cases, like, like the Raleigh's are still there. And uh, so we kept coming back and back and back. And really we can consider Nativity our home church now. Um, how often do you get to leave a church and then come back to a church uh, at a different time, you know, a 17, 18 year difference in time, but still the same people, the same welcoming spirit. And uh, so we were, uh, we're very comfortable. It's like an old shoe. Mm -hmm. you wear it. And, uh, Yes, uh, you know, coming from the old church, or the old building to the new building was a traumatic experience. Um, a lot of people were excited about it, and, uh, but it worked. And, uh, and uh, I think it uh, came out to be a, a very good time and uh, very successful. And uh, it should continue forever and ever, as far as I'm concerned way beyond uh, Dana's uh, tenure as, uh, as the rector. So that's our story, basically. Um, um, two, uh, two religions, melded, two denominations melded together, and it's worked out very successful for 50-some years. So we're happy. Anybody got any questions? Rich, I think you neglected to, to say, modestly, I'm afraid, that you were the senior warden during the transition. That was a very important time and a very important coordination to happen at that time in 95, 96, when we moved. Yeah, well, I, I, I specifically eliminated that, that statement. Uh, mm -hmm because I didn't want to toot my own horn. <laughs> but it was, uh, I was just a part of it. Gretchen, you were the other part. Mm -hmm. um, and, there, and I'll tell you what, the way that it really got sold to the parishioners at the time to move from Highland Avenue up to where we are now was going out to a campfire, believe it or not. And having all the people around that were at the campfire, it was, uh, we did it every year. And, uh, and uh, we talked about it in an informal way because you couldn't, we couldn't vote on it yet. Um, and then uh, made everybody's feelings known. And everybody at that location was pretty much concerned, you know, convinced that, yeah, we had to do it. When you consider that uh, at uh, the old church, uh, we sat, if we had a large uh, congregation at that time, um, we had to sit in the narthex. It had the church was full, and they had to move, put chairs into the narthex, which you don't normally do uh, for services. But that's just one part of it. Uh, yes, it was a traumatic experience for a lot of people. Uh, stressful time, yeah, but a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, uh, believe it or not. Uh, because I knew I was doing something wonderful for, uh, for everybody, you know, and uh, so that's, that's my little story to it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. We don't want to forget it. Anybody else got anything to say? 
Well, I hope we get to do fires again. That sounds like fun. <laughs> fire campfire, you know. Yeah, we were. You go out to a. We went to a forest preserve and uh, did it out there. I forget what the name of it is now. It was a long time ago, and my memory sort of fades over the years. But uh, yeah, we had uh, the kids were out there. You know, it's interesting. The kids, when we were talking about what type of church they would like to see, they wanted to see one that looked like a cross. Mm. You know, the one we had was not a, necessarily a cross. Uh, and, uh, but they all wanted to see a cross of her church. And I thought, okay, <laughs> that was nativity or what would be nativity. So that was kind of interesting. So, and as far as, uh, you know, Dorinda was right. Uh, we had the kids, or she and Jack, and uh, had the kids over for uh, a pizza after uh, supper or after their ball game. And uh, it was kind of interesting. I, I didn't go down. I let, you know, those two ran the thing. Uh, we had a pool table down there and kids could play pool. And the basement was set up such that there was a little separate little area where people could just talk, you know. Or they could go out in the backyard for all we cared. It was all fenced in. They weren't going to run away. And uh, it worked out quite well over the summer months because it dealt with a bunch of kids that had been confirmed, were older, you know, were still in high school. But somehow at that time, it, it filled a void that they had of being together with, the, with their contemporaries. Mm -hmm and uh, being able to discuss whatever they wanted to discuss in a, in a, fe a feeling of freedom. And uh, nobody was gonna say anything, non-judgmental type of thing from the, uh, from the adults. It was their time. We were just there to chaperone. So that worked out well. I certainly agree, Rich. This is Dennis. Uh, we my kids participated in some of those activities and they have fond memories there are. That's good to hear, thank you. What has fed you, each of you, because um, that might be different for each of you, but, um, what has fed you spiritually at Nativity over, those, over your experiences here? Um, you know, there, there are two, uh, two commandments, uh, Dana, right? The two great commandments, love God and then love your neighbor. And those sort of melded together here. Um, you know, and uh, then you also have the creed, the Nicene Creed that, that we say every Sunday, which sort of formed my bedrock to whatever was going on. And uh, that, and since we're, we're really two separate, developed two separate ways in our religious upbringing, um, this was a, a good meld. And, um, you know, nativity fit that. It's as simple as that. Nativity, the people, the parishioners, the, the, uh, the priests, everybody just sort of fit together in that. Uh, and um, it's worked well for me. Um, and I, I couldn't be happier where we are. And uh, I'm very satisfied and, you know, in what all is it's going on. Well, as I said, um, the Sunday services or whenever we were able to attend service, was a part of it, but then being a part of the groups um, was also very important. The Wednesday night uh, meetings were more probably intellectually stimulating. And then um, the, uh, you know, the family table at one point, it was on Saturday nights. And that way some of the youth group were participating in it, but seeing them and then even meeting the people that attended family table and hearing about some of their experiences um, helped. And uh, 
the Friday night group, I thought also was very good. It's, I mean, when you're in the large congregation, um, you can learn so much, but then when you get out into the smaller groups and get to know the people better and hear various ideas, everybody comes from a different background. That's why I made the comment about Episcopalians being independent is that even though a lot of people have different ideas, we were able to express those and um, appreciate their background rather than say they had to change. And what I think about is um, the first thing that really hit me were the um, sermons. So Dana, you and Kathleen are amazing at bringing such humanness in challenge. Um, what um, I don't know where you guys find all these different authors that you read that have such um, beautiful perspectives about this journey that we're all on. And I have loved those stories. And in addition to what you and Kathleen share, it's been beautiful to listen to some of the parishioners who will stand up and share their journeys as well. Um, and, and again, I, I'm trying to search for a better word than that humanness, right? Because it's we all come from this um, this vulnerability, and we're all trying to to find that best path, and we're all trying to do our best with others on that path. And what you bring reflects that, but also gives you such um, light so that you know what direction to continue to try to go. So thank you. Wow, thank you, Teresa. Um, you know, I'm inspired by people sitting in the pews and how, um, how we as a community not only reach out and support and care for each other, but, you know, Teresa, you are a hero. Um, and as someone who is working and coordinating the nurses at Children's mm -hmm. Hospital, um, we pray for our healthcare workers through this COVID. Um, we pray specifically for you and many other particular healthcare workers here at Nativity. And we're grateful for you. We're very honored to be a part of that group. Thank you. Yeah, and that's special. I mean, I had a wonderful church that I was going to before I married Henry, but I've never had that kind of community prayer for, for me and others. That's extremely touching and honored. So thank you. Well, and I'd like, just like to say welcome to Teresa, you know, being a new member and just thrilled that you're here. And welcome back to Rich and Dorinda. I'm so glad that you're, you know, that you're with us again. To be here. And yeah, I'm just playing bunco with you, Dorinda. Yes. <laughs> I don't think. And I want to thank Kelly. It was fun when, uh, pan well, not fun that the pandemic started, but to get that call from Kelly first and then from Diane and the cards. And it was kind of sweet. Diane had left me this painted rock as part of a little gift. And um, when I got a card the other day, there were more painted rocks. And it said, God loves you. And another one said, peace. And another one said, love. And so I messaged uh, Diane and said, thank you for those rocks. And she said, they're not for me. So I have no idea where these other rocks came from that were in my mailbox with this message of, of God's love, which was really a sweet surprise. But thank you. We have another rock fairy at Nativity. And she's <laughs> out and about. <laughs> sweet. So, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was that one of the things that we did this summer, because we really can't get so close to our neighbors. So um, we put little fairy doors on our front two trees and little um, windows and have little glass paths 
And so we've got all these little ones in the neighborhood that will come and they'll move these paths and they'll tell us little stories about the fairies living in the trees. It is so adorable. And the kids across the street had actually painted a rock and left it at the door for one of the fairies one day. So oh. I wasn't sure if it was that or someone else it from could the be church. Them. So, yeah. It could be them as well. It's been so precious. So as we've been um, thinking about weaving our stories and why we wanted to do this, and I, I would invite Kelly and Diane and Gretchen. Um, Christina was also part of this uh, part of the group that helped us decide what we were going to do this fall for adult form. I don't know if Christina's on this morning, um, but uh, our our hope was to continue to get to know one another better, uh, to continue to get to know each other's paths a little better of, of what's been important to you about nativity um, and what's been uh, significant about nativity in your faith journey. And I have just so appreciated people's willingness to share that. Dennis and Karen Borton um, have sent us a video as well. Mm. Um, I didn't think that, um, I don't think that we have adequate time to get to that this morning. Um, so if that's all right, I'd like to do it next, um, next Sunday. We'll share that if that works for you, Dennis and Karen. That should be fine, thanks. That would be great. Thank you so much for, for doing that. And um, if you would like to, to be a part of sharing your story, um, just give me a call um, or any one of us on the team, Diane, Gretchen, whatever. Um, we, just, we just chose some people to get us um, started and we tried to choose a, 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 a variety of people who had a variety of different ex lengths of time here at Nativity. Um, we have about four or five other um, folks who have said yes to doing this. Um, I'm still waiting to get their, um, their videos, but um, there are others who are kind of in the hopper, but if it was something you'd like to do, let us know. Anything that the team wants to say about weaving our stories, mm -hmm. Diane, Kelly, or Gretchen? Well, you know, I, I did mine live and just kind of off the cuff. Um, and it's interesting, um, you know, not preparing for it. I mean, I kind of know what our objective was is to get the history of how we came here, but I learned a lot about me <laughs> when I told my story and, um, you know, other people have watched the video and they've, they've picked up on things that I didn't really pay attention to. So, um, in retrospect, I'm really glad I did it because, you know, I'm, I might change my mind about certain things, but it gives me a historical perspective. I and mean, you know, we all, we often get myopic about our own life, but to actually hear it as part of a record and be part of the history of the nativity, that's a, that's a special kind of cool, you know? So I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Gretchen, I don't know if you feel that way too, but um, I'm, I'm glad that, it, you know, people can watch it in the future or whatever. Right. I, I'm just uh, curious about everybody's experience and, and I would like to hear any number of us tell story, our, our stories because they're all very interesting. So uh, I would encourage you to do it. It's, it's a gift. It's a gift for all of us to hear who you are. So true. Thank you, Gretchen. Well, I'm going to let you have a few minutes to chat. Um, the, it's almost 10 o'clock. Um, if you want to stay on here, you can for a while. Uh, I'll, um, I'll close the session out at 1015. The worship um, link should be up at 10 o'clock if you'd like to log on. Um, we kind of give you 10, 10 minutes to kind of chat and say hello there. And then we'll um, start at 10.10 with the prelude 
and do some announcements and begin service. Today, Megan Gooden is going to share the reflection um, in place of the sermon. Um, so I'm really looking forward to Megan. Also, um, we're going to reintroduce um, the children's story today. So Jean's going to um, do that for us this morning, too. So we're always trying new things of, of how to gather for worship online. So I'll see you in a little bit um, inside the sanctuary. Blessings to you all this morning. Thank you. Well, I'm going to finish my second cup of coffee and uh, have breakfast with my husband in the 15 minutes. So I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and leave. <laughs> okay. Really good to see you, Mary Kay. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit better. Good. Thank you. Good. Good to see you, Mary Kay. Yeah. It's, it's, it, things are improving. Thank you guys for sharing. I really appreciate hearing your stories. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Rich and Dorian. It was good seeing everyone. See you at, at the service. Okay. Sure. Thank you. See you guys later. Bye-bye. I have to go brew my first cup of tea. I need it. <laughs> cup of coffee, too, so I shall depart. Where's the...